Hey everyone, this is Andrew, the 3D Printing Engineer, and in this video, I'm going to show you how we designed this headphone stand in SOLIDWORKS. But first, let's watch time-lapse. Alright, so as you can see, this part actually printed uh, in this orientation. Um, and the, the, the reason for that is um, when I was thinking about how to print this, I didn't want to print it on its back, um, which kind of makes the most sense from, from an ease of 3D printing perspective. But when you think about how the force is applied on something like this, all the force is going in this direction. So if you print it like this, all the layer lines are like this. So when you put a part in bending, um, the forces applied to this part are going to be pushing and pulling apart the layers. So if I print it like this, all the layers are stacked up like this. So its weakest orientation is actually pulling it apart like this, which you're never going to do in a headphone stand. So that's why I printed in this weird orientation. Um, and the, the kind of goal of this thing was to design a headphone stand that used way less material and pretty much faster. Um, I'll put some results on the comparison of, of this part of the design to the other headphone stand that which is a pretty common headphone stand on Finiverse. Um, and you know, that one prints like this, which is a disadvantage. I mean, headphones aren't heavy, but I figured I might as well try to optimize it for strength. Um, and then, you know, the material usage and time, because that one took a lot longer. Um, it's a lot more material than this, which is only um, 0.15 inches. So it's, I think I, I originally designed it for an eighth of an inch, and I upped it because I wanted to have a little more not that it really needs it, but I didn't want it to feel like this flimsy piece of plastic. Or something. So this 0.15 made it feel plenty strong enough. And the other cool things about this um, is that it prints with no support, even though it prints with weird orientation. Um, I, one, my biggest goal was no support material. Um, however, I was fine allowing it to um, have some tricky, tricky parts to print. <clears throat> so when you're printing it like this, this um, the set part that actually holds the headphones. This is printing in, in midair, so it, it has a it has an angle overhang associated with it. And this leg also is printing in air. So this is contacting the build plate, this is printing as an overhang, and this is printing as an overhang. And also you have these um, kind of stylistic <laughs> sound bars, as I think of them, on the, on the, the body of the headphone stand. And these are going to be printed as just straight bridging, um, because there's an open gap and they're just printing right over air point to point, so that's going to test your bridging settings. The other thing is that since this is printing like this, um, there's such little surface area of the part actually touching the build plane, so if you don't have good bedded fusion, um, there's a chance that this could fall right over. Uh, my first revision, it was actually printing on the edge, because I didn't have these two parts um, as one plane. They, they were kind of in different planes, um, however, their, their edges lined up, um, so it was printing on their edges. And I'm surprised it worked at all, it did. Um, but for this Rev2, I thought I'd go in and I would actually find a plane that was at the intersection of this line and this line, and then I did a cut and I offset it, and I, did, I mirrored it to this side, and well, I'll show you the SOLIDWORKS file in the room. Anyway, if I went through the steps, but, but that was my thought process. I wanted to have one plane that this could print on, so that, that made it really better. So yeah, um, it's a part that works. It's, it's a part that met the requirements, doesn't use support material, and you know, working is also a requirement. Um, it, it tests some characteristics of your printer, it allows you to tune it, it uses less material, and it prints faster than other things. So this I consider a success. Now let's go to SolidWorks. All right, so welcome to SolidWorks. Uh, here is our model here, the headphone stand. I'm just gonna guide you through this model uh, step by step. Um, so obviously you start with nothing, and then what I did, and then what I did is I drew this um, profile. So what I did is I drew a sketch, um, just some lines on the plane, and then I extruded them outwards. I knew I was going to be printing in this orientation, so I thought I might as well model in that orientation. Um, this is called an extrude fin feature. Um, it's kind of like an extrude, except you don't define the thickness. You define the thickness of your, your feature in the actual um, feature instead of doing it in the sketch. Um, so you basically just pick a thickness and you pick an extrude distance. Um, so that, that's how I ended up with this shape. Next one I wanted to do is I wanted to define a plane that was directly in the center. I just clicked the plane to both sides and define a center 
plane. I could have done this different ways, but I decided to do it this way. Like I could have done a, I could have drawn this on this plane, and instead of extruding it six inches this way, I could have had it extruded three and three. Um, that would have given me the plane I drew on as a center plane. However, I decided to do it this way. Uh, next, what I did is I decided to cut out those, those slants. Um, so what I do, did is I drew on a plane that was um, on this face here. And I just, or yes, I drew it on this back face, and I just cut through. Um, I didn't bother defining everything, so I, I kind of just, I knew I needed these to find, and this didn't matter. It just needed outside the boundaries of my model. And the way I did is I just mirrored that, because I knew I was going to be, um, have this model be symmetrical. could have drawn this all, but it, would, it was a little faster to do it as a mirror. Again, there's a million ways to do this. This probably isn't the most optimized way, but I was just kind of going brute force as I was designing. Um, now, as you can see here, I I realized I wanted to have these feet go outward, not inward. Um, I kind of didn't realize that until after I did that cut, but I didn't feel like going back to fix it. So I just added these tabs here. And again, I did a mirror just to quickly add on there. I did some fillets. Those aren't really important. Those are just for style. And this was just a tab to hold on the headphone stand. I just did it extruded right in the top plane, on top of this tab here, and I just extruded it upwards. Do some more fillets. And this is just purely for style. Um, well, almost purely for style. Um, I also figured it would remove some material. Um, it also kind of gives it a more challenging um, print. So, you know, for example, you're printing this in this orientation. So now these are all bridges. So it gives your printer a challenge. They look good and they reduce the material. Here I cut out the center. I didn't want to have it be a solid bottom piece. I wanted it to have legs. Um, this is mostly just for aesthetics, uh, but it does also cut out some material. Uh, however, it does add more complications as far as printing goes because now, you know, printing in this orientation, uh, this leg is printing in free air. Um, so it's, it's had an overhanging angle that needs to deal with. Uh, some fillets. more fillets. Now these are somewhat structural, but also some aesthetics. Um, you know, if you just have a sharp corner where, where there's going to be bending taking place, it's going to cause the stress concentration to form. So basically, if you have a certain amount of stress at this joint, the fact that it's a sharp edge is going to cause an even bigger stress. Because that's what a stress concentration is. Um, you, can, you can look up more about stress concentration online. You'll find tons of stuff. You don't more about it. But basically adding a round just um, helps reduce stress concentrations along that line. And if I had another plane here, um, what happened is that when I originally did this first print, I didn't have, well actually even in this step here, you can see if I'm printing it along the surface, it's not gonna be printing flat along both these planes. It's gonna be printing on this edge, and then it's gonna be printing on this edge. So only this edge and this edge were touching the build plate on the first printing. It, it printed fine, surprisingly, but it very easily could have toppled over. Um, well, actually, I, what I did is I added a brim. Um, and so what happened is some of these initial first layers just kind of got mixed, you know, kind of hodgepodge together, if you will. Um, and it worked. However, I figured I would print that on my, my, or fix it on my final version. And so that's why this plane is here. I had to find a plane that um, touched this edge and this edge. So the reason why I did that is because then what I could do is I could extrude this into this part. And so now I have one plane here. So if I click that, you see it's one continuous plane. Now if I was really going for style points, I probably could have um, extruded this out a little bit. Um, and then when I did this cut here, this would be one continuous um, part. I wouldn't have this weird angle here. Um, however, when you print it, it doesn't look as weird as it does in the model. Um, but it's something I'm probably going to fix in the future. Last thing I did is I mirrored that cut along that center plane I created earlier, and that gave me another flat surface over here. Didn't really need it over here, however, it just keeps the model uh, symmetrical, um, which is you know, mostly just aesthetics. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Uh, ask me any questions you want in the comments on SolidWorks design or 3D printing, whatever. Subscribe for more. Uh, like my page on Facebook. There's a link in the description. Um, on that Facebook page, I actually post kind of extra content that I, I don't make a video on. Um, for example, I only have one GoPro, so I can only make one time-lapse at once, but I'm still 3D printing parts. 
Um, so what I'll do is I'll take pictures sometimes, um, or I'll talk about something that I like that's not really video worthy, but I just want to share it and post on it. So yeah, like that Facebook page if you're interested in that. All right, see you later.